Hi. So, I've been thinking a lot for a little while now about this term I picked up uh, from ContraPoints and a few other sources uh, called parasocial relationships, where it's like, you know, basically the sort of, I don't know, well, parasocial relationship that we have with people that we don't ever actually see and that we typically communicate with very asymmetrically, right? Celebrities, YouTube, particularly, you know, YouTube and social media content creators. And I don't know. I've developed a lot of those over the years, although for me they're maybe a bit different than they are for other people, especially for the last two or three years. And a particularly strong one that I have is with ContraPoints. And I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about, like, why do I try making YouTube content? And the short answer is I am a horrible, egotistical person who wants my thoughts and ideas to be out there and to be seen by people. But, you know, for me, um, being a YouTuber would not be my end game, right? I'm definitely not trying to make money off of YouTube. Uh, and in fact, I only recently, like, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm definitely not going to achieve that notoriety anytime soon, right? You know, I, I was delighted recently when I got eight whole subscribers, so thank you everyone who did decide to watch my content and subscribe, uh, and to uh, at least one person who even uh, reached out a little bit, um, and, and also made some content, you know, basically saying like, you know, hey, I can do whatever I want on YouTube. Uh, well, me too, uh, because I'm not worried about monetization, but I am concerned with achieving some things. But of course, you know, well, I said being a YouTuber is not my end game. In fact, meeting the people that I have parasocial relationships with is not even my end game. I would love to meet Natalie Wynn of ContraPoints. I would love to meet Dustin Sandlin of Smarter Every Day. I would love uh, to meet a bunch of people. Uh, Sam from Wendover Productions, Hank and John Green. The list goes on and on and on. And, you know, I, I would love to meet and talk with these people. Uh, but even that isn't my end game. You know, I don't really have an uh, end game in any good scenarios, and I'm sorry to loop back to the thing that I always talk about, but yeah, it's that there's a part of me that is cannot stop worrying that we will be at war before too long with China, which would not be a good thing. Like, that is not how the world should resolve its problems. At all. But yeah, there's a high probability that India and Pakistan will begin fighting each other. And then as a result, India and China will begin fighting each other. And as a result of that, the United States and China will be fighting each other. And, I don't know. I am a strange person in a lot of ways. I am, for somebody of my sort of, you know, social disposition, I'm kind of weirdly patriotic, although I have my own interpretation of patriotism and what's good about this country. But I think there are a lot of good things, even if we don't always live up to our ideals. We at least have some good ideals, and I think we try. And I just think that that means we should do better, not that we should give up. But I'm constantly worried that we're going to be involved in a conflict like that. And then, you know, I guess, to be honest, I watch too much science fiction. I watch too much Battlestar Galactica. I watch too much Stargate SG-1. And, you know, 
as a result, I have this built-up idea of what it would be like to be a fighter pilot. And I still want to do that. But I also recognize the reality that, you know, doing that would involve potentially killing people. And I, I'm sorry that, like, 90% of the videos I make end up being on this, but hardly anybody's watching me, so who cares? Although, if you're still here, you know, thank you. I appreciate, uh, you know, the, you know, use of your time and mental energy and the most valuable things you have. But, you know, I don't know. There's just always been this part of me that feels like that's what I should do. And, but then this other part of me that feels that that's messed up, right? Because there's some parts of it that I would be okay with, right? You know, when it comes to, like, you know, shooting at other high-performance fighter airplanes, uh, that are up there, right, it's like, you know, they also have a, like, multi-million dollar fighter jet and worked hard to become a fighter pilot, and they know why they're up there, and so do I, you know, game on, and also they have an ejection seat that they can use any time they want to quit, um, you know, so that I would be perfectly fine with, but then, you know, there's the other aspect of it, right, where it's like, you've got to drop bombs on people, right, and that's not some other pilot up there fighting you on the same terms, that's like, you know, some and it has to be done, right? In some aspects of it, I would even still feel like feel more mixed feelings, but still fundamentally feel like I really needed to do it, right? Something like a close air support mission, right? Where there's our people fighting on the ground, and there's people shooting at them with guns, and you know they have to be stopped. But that does also feel messed up, right? Because how many of them just got drafted into the PLA versus how many actually want to be there, I'll never know, right? And, you know, even if they want to be there, how many of them really understand what they're, you know, doing and understand the realities of modern warfare and how awful it can get, you know, the world, and the world hasn't even seen anything like that in 75 years or so, thank God, since the Second World War, where we're really in an absolute total war. It is, the world has seen some awful things, and many a warrior has been through some terrible experiences since then, but we haven't seen something quite like that since then, where it really is all out. You know? And then there's even one level worse, right? Thinking back to a conflict like that, right? Where it's like, cities got bombed, you know, not just by us. In fact, we kind of just, you know, started doing it after it became the norm right but it was a reality in the second world that cities with nothing but civilian targets got bombed and that would probably happen all over again and i'd have to just be okay with that too but even thinking about all of that it still feels like what i should do because better me than someone else you know better me who has thought about the philosophical and moral implications of these things and will actually, you know, be decisive in action, but, you know, come back home at night and, you know, after the mission debrief, think through, oh my God, is this what we're doing? And make that part of my operational philosophy to do the best I can to you know, minimize unnecessary damage, you know, to obviously minimize damage to us, but also, you know, disable the enemy's ability to fight with as little damage to, you know, people that don't deserve to die as possible, which nobody deserves to. So it's just keeping that in mind. And, you know, better me that I know will feel bad, and also better me that has spent time thinking about what it would mean to potentially be killed in something like that and being more okay with it. You know? I'm sorry, everything I make out just ends up being like, hey, I want to be a fighter pilot. Let's make that happen, world. But I do sincerely pray that I never have to do that, that I never get to, because I don't want the world to come to that. But I've seen the Blue Angels 
fly. I've seen the Thunderbirds fly, and yeah, it's about the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I would love to fly one of those airplanes. I just hope that the circumstances that would really require me to do it never come to pass, even if I think that they're quite likely in the future. And I don't know. Like I said, I've watched Battlestar Galactica one too many times, and I remember what Commander Adama says when the Cylons first attack, because Starbuck, aka Kara Thrace, has just been thrown in the brig because she, like, you know, she did punch out a superior officer uh, while she was drunk during a card game where they started throwing insults at each other, and she's just a belligerent, self-destructive bitch, but she's a damn good pilot. And the Cylons have decided to attack, so they need her. And after areas of other conversations when the, with various people on the bridge, the C, or the CIC, which are the same in the BSG universe, apparently, but it, they, it is explicitly referred to as the CIC, which is a real thing. It's just distinct from the bridge on an actual ship. And, well... You know, after a series of conversations with people in the CIC, he says, and get Terra Thrace out of the brig.